Hi guys, it's Kobe here and in today's video we are going to talk about the matrix object in the more graph menu. So this is actually a continuation of my more graph menu explanation. Um, the first object we did in the more graph menu was the clonal object and now we are going next to the matrix object. So the matrix object is just like the um, clonal object. One, one can actually say it's the cloner's best friend because it literally works the same way as the clonal object. All right. And it helps in several ways. It's actually real best friend of the clone object because it, in several instances, it's a really, really help to the clone object. So I'll simply go ahead and start explaining what the matrix object does. So the matrix objects are just sets of points in space, right? Which has position, scale, and rotation. So all the effectors and everything applies to it just like an, a normal cloner. So I can come into our more graph menu here and I'll add a random effector. And you can see it applies to it exactly as the cloner object. But if I should select the matrix object and come to its attributes, we can see we have similar attributes as the cloner object. See, so you have the mode, grid, which is object, linear, radial, grid, and honeycomb, just like the cloner object, right? And it, almost everything down here, it's attrib attribute of the modes as well. So if I should select object, I have to give it object to define where everything. So I wouldn't go to, so much into it. If you want to know, like I said, get the explanation. If you watch my video on the clone object, you should be able to um, replicate it, say, the same thing here. So for those ones, it might not be necessary to repeat it again. If you watch the cloner video, you will be fine. But another thing the matrix object also does is it can also generate thinking particles, which, you know, can be very helpful. So if I set it to, um, let's say a grid, you can see now it, there are some ticks in every, every matrix, right? So you can also use it for thinking particles as well. I'll set it back to matrix. And after that, you have to sort of refresh it before the uh, thinking particles will disappear. Aside that, everything also applies. The weight, UV, and this is where you put your effectors and everything. So then the question will be, then what is the essence of the matrix object? So the matrix object can sort of act like a placeholder for the clone object in a lot of situations. So for example, I'm working in a scene or with a lot of uh, object which has dense mesh, right? And I want to sort of duplicate it or create multiple copies of it so that I can use effectors and stuff on it to affect it, right? But if you do it directly in the clone object, it might slow your scene and you cannot see how the feedback clearly and everything. In some cases or previously, this is how you typically do it. So you use the matrix object. So for instance, I'll come in here and I'll add my, uh, let's say random effector, I probably put it, let's say, add um, some noise to it um, increase the parameters and everything. Uh, so let's say this is what I want my and uh, my effectors to do to my, let's say, animation, right? If I had dense mesh and I put it in a clone and try to do this, it will actually slow my scene. So typically you use the matrix object right so that you see the feedback things playing smoothly then the next thing is that you clone on the matrix object so now you come to let's say your cloner object i'll put in cloner and i'll put in x sphere i'll make it a sphere smaller like five centimeters then i'll now the cloner i'll set it to object and the object i want to clone on is the matrix so instantly you can see let me actually hide the matrix and I can see we have our sphere in place. So it begins to play. If, if the sphere was to be like dense mesh, it will actually slow our scene. So that's where the matrix can be very useful and it saves the cloner from lagging play and all those things. So this one way you can it can be useful for the cloner. Another way is that um, let me actually take off the um, the random for now and let's say i have this object i want to deform so i'll put in the bend deformer in here and i can put in the bend deformer straight under the clone object so i have to put them together in the null so i'll create a null object 
and I'll put the bend deformer in a cloner in it so that the bend can affect affect it. Because if I make the the bend a child of the um, cloner, it will make multiple copies of it, which that's not what you want. You want it to deform. So what you do is uh, oh, now increase the bend and rotate it um, 90. Yeah. So you can see we are bending um, our object, right? But you see what's happening. It's stretching our, our spheres, right? So if we had any other object, when we try bending it, you can see it stretches the sphere, which that we don't want it that way. So it's not, sometimes, depending on what you're doing, you might want the bend to affect your clones, right? But in some instances, to you don't want it to affect. You want it to bend just as it is, but you don't want the straight deform deformation to affect your clone. So that is where the matrix object can be very useful. So what you do is, instead of bending the clone them itself, you bend the matrix object, right? Actually, so you bend the matrix object, and now the clone will apply to the matrix object. So if I come to the um, clone in here. And see now it's applying so i can hide the matrix and you can see now the clones are bending but it's not stretching or deforming um like it did when i actually use the blend on the cloner itself so i'll say keep um y in the bend can check and check it again to refresh it and now you can see we have our clones bend without deforming or stretching our object so that's a couple of ways that you can make the uh, use the matrix to help um the cloner object that's why it's the cloner's best friend so basically that's all about the matrix object and if everything anything that you want to know a bit more you can watch the, my the video on cloner that i did or if you have any question or any comment please leave it in the comment section and i'll be glad to help or answer or any feedback to our gladly appreciate it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one